All right, now let's say we wanted to simulate this kind of animation in our computer program. To do that, we would need to be able to individually control several millions, perhaps, of these little elements here. And in general, these are called particles, which is why this is called a particle system. And computer simulators, real-world simulators, like a particle system, were originally designed to simulate the motion of natural phenomenon like snow, rain, smoke, fire, clouds, and so forth. To do that, a particle system has to be able to control hundreds or thousands or even millions of individual objects, which are called particles generically, and do so in a way that is convincingly natural. For example, let's say you have to create some digital snow for a special effects shot, as we mentioned. In a real snowfall, as you can see, since every snowflake is roughly the same as its neighbor, they all travel at roughly the same speed, but with slight variations, so that every flake follows its own path at its own speed, subject to wind and gravity and other sorts of disturbances like that. And there are thousands of them, or millions of them. So if you were doing this by hand, and we wanted to try to make this digital snow look convincing, we'd have to take hundreds of copies of a little white dot and put each one on its own layer and keyframe each one by hand with similar but not identical motion paths to have them drift down the screen in a realistic way. This would take you probably most of the rest of your life, which is why particle systems were invented, in fact. A particle system like Particle Playground can generate the hundreds or thousands of particles needed to simulate snow or other types of natural phenomenon. In fact, here's an example of another type of particle system, fire, where you have all these individual plasma elements plus some particles and particulate matter from the fire itself all aggregated together here under the control of the energy that's being generated by the fire itself. And all those millions or even billions of little particles combine to create this overall image here, this overall motion. So a particle system like Particle Playground can generate the hundreds or thousands or millions of particles needed to simulate things like fire or snow and independently control each one's speed, direction, lifespan, color, and dozens of other properties like gravity and collision detection with or without automatic randomness, all without you having to touch a single flake or plasma particle here. All you need to do is set the general rules or procedures for particle playground to follow and it takes care of the rest. Now, one of the nice things about Particle Playground is that most particle systems just let you work with a simple little dot or point or perhaps maybe a plane or a polygon or something like that. A Particle Playground takes this particle concept several steps further by letting you use any layer, either as individual images or even as sequential frames, as a source for particle generation. Particle Playground is also one of the very few particle systems available that lets you use text as particles, which is something that we're going to be doing a lot in the course of this tutorial here. All right, in our next video, let's proceed on here a little bit and talk a little bit more about some of the concepts behind particle systems and simulators.